So, let us go back and look at this phi function, right. So, remember I was telling you phi is some representation that you have for the states and actions, right. Quite often uh, uh, we come up with this representation with through some kind of an idea about how the state looks like, right, uh, how we, we, we uh, the knowledge that we have about the domain, right. So, let us take a simple uh, look, right. So, one of the simplest thing, let us say that I have my uh, state space uh, given by a grid, right, like this. Right. So, one way of taking my actions, uh, one, of, one way of converting my states, right, I could say that, uh, so my phi, right, is, 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 is a 2 vector. So, I have the x and the y dimension. So, this is 1, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, my phi will be a tuple, right, my phi of some state s yes, will be a tuple uh, that has the x coordinate, the x, s, x coordinate of s yes and the y coordinate of s, yes, right. And of course, I need to have my action. So, how can I encode my action? In this case, I am going to have 4 different actions, right. So, it will be north, south, uh, east and west is what we have, uh, but uh, I cannot feed in north, south, east, west. So, what will I do is I will say, hey, by the way, north is uh, you know 1, 0, 0, 0, right, south is 0, 1, 0, 0, east is 0, 0, 1, 0, west is 0, 0, 0, 1. So, I will say that is the action. So, now if I want to encode the action, then I will say suppose th this is um, north, right. I will say then my action is 1, 0, 0. So, now I have a 6 dimensional, I have a 6 dimensional vector, right, that corresponds to a state and action pair in this, uh, uh, in this kind of a grid world scenario, right, in this kind of a grid world scenario, right. So, each, each location in the grid uh, could potentially uh, be represented by the x and y coordinates, right. And then uh, the actions could be represented by some kind of a encoding. In this case, I used one of n encoding, you must have come across one of n. Alternatively, I could have just done this, right. So, north is 0, south is 1, east is 2, west is 3, in which case I would have done uh, uh, my, my action here would have been 0, right. And likewise, uh, some other uh, phi of s comma uh, west would have been x s, y s and 3. Right, that would have been my state action, but that would have been my phi. And now I will feed this phi into, into my linear function approximator. So, my q of s comma w would be uh, uh, west, okay, w here is west, w1 xs plus w2 ys plus uh, w3 into 3 plus some w4 or w0, right. That gives me the bias, right. So, I have my w0 plus w1 x5 xs plus w2 ys plus w3 into 3 because its action is west. So, this is my q function. So, that is how the linear function approximator the features will work. But the nice thing is the features do not have to be as simple as this. Right? I can actually think of having more complicated features. So, for example, so my phi of s comma n could very well be xs ys x s squared, y s squared, x s y s and 0. Right. The 0 comes because that is the action, right. So, the 0 is for the north action and this is essentially the feature expansion of my states. I could do that, right. I mean this is what I needed. So, what will this allow me? Now, if I am going to look at q of s comma north, right, this is going to be interesting. So, q of s comma north will be w1 x s plus w2 y s plus w3 x s square w4 w5 x x x5 y5 w6 times 0 actually and then w0 right. So, basically the action is not contributing anything to the actual value that you are computing. So, that would mean that the action will have to you know kind of baseline the values on n, but think about that later, right. So, the, so that is that will be basically the function for q of s comma n, okay. Now, what I want you to appreciate is that even this function is still a linear approximation, right. Even though I have quadratic terms in x phi and y phi and all that. I am not solving for x phi or y phi, right. 
when I am looking at the actual set of equations I am going to solve this x y square x s squared and y s squared and all that will actually compute to some numbers right. So, if you want to think about it it will be basically let us say that I am I am here right. So, my x s will be 3 and my y s will be 2 right. So, for this particular state okay, I am going to call it uh, I am just going to give it some name right. Uh, let us call it uh, give me something ok let us call it state uh, state j ok. So, now I am going to look at q of j comma n. So, now remember j is actually equal to 3 comma 2 right. So, this is x j and this is y j right. So, com computing with that, so this will basically become 3 times w1 plus uh, 2 times w2 plus 9 times w3 plus 4 times w4 plus 6 times w5 plus 0 times w6 plus w0. Right. So, this is the actual expression. So, if you look at this expression, you can see that all the variables are linear. So, that is why it is a linear function approximator. So, even though I can have potentially have all these quadratic terms uh, for my x s and uh, y s and so on so forth, I can even have a quadratic term for my action for all you know, uh, but it still does not uh, actually make any difference to the function that I am going to actually learn about where all the w's are going to appear in a linear form and that is why this is a linear function approximator right. And you can actually use this uh, it, uh, for doing a whole bunch of different things. So, this is one way of thinking this now this is a way of learning quadratic functions of the state variables for the value function right. The value function now in this case is a quadratic function of the state variable. You could also think of it as even being more complicated look at some kind of exponential functions you could look at uh, you know sin and cosine and some, some kind of powers of that that will give you Fourier expansions. But all of these you can still learn in terms of what the features are right. So, apart from this, this is one class of feature vectors that I can have right, basically some kind of mathematical functions right, right. I, I could also have feature vectors that are logical functions of the state variables right. So, I can do things like, uh, um, so uh, let us call these, you know, these are phi 1s, phi 2 things like this. So, basically what I have done here is, so phi 1 of s comma a is equal to x s right phi 2 of s comma a equal to y s right. So, that is basically how I am. So, when I say phi 1 phi 2, so this is phi 1, this is phi 2, this is phi 3, phi 4, phi 5 and phi 6 right. So, phi 1, uh, phi 1, phi 2, phi 3 is like that right. So, I could basically define a phi 1 of s comma a right phi 1 of s comma a to be equal to uh, So, this can basically look at the scene, figure out if there is a block that you that you are interested if, it, if a block is on table or not right. Phi 2 can have something like this arm mt right if you can think of the right. So, this is equal to 1 if a true 0 if false right likewise 1 for true. 0 for false right. So, what does it mean if the arm or the gripper in the robot if it is empty and it is not holding anything then phi 2 will be 1 if it is holding something phi 2 will be 0 right. Likewise phi 1 is the block on table if there is a block that is on table so I am supposed to hold the block and if the block is on the table then phi 1 will be 1 right. If the block is not on the table then phi 1 will be 0. So, like that for each of these phi 1, phi 2, phi 3 I can construct many many complex uh, solutions. So, for example, sorry uh, for example, phi 3 uh, in some other problem right not the same uh, robot problem right. Say something like uh, say phi 4 of s comma a is uh, or uh, is 2 x in rho right. So, 
so you can say that our, uh, there are two x's in a row anywhere right in a tic tac toe game i can define a feature in this case i'm just arbitrarily calling it phi 4 so the fourth vector in your uh, representation fourth uh, component in your representation can come from whether there are two x's in a row anywhere in the table or you can make it even further right or there are two x's in row 1 right and likewise i could have phi 3 phi 5 will be or there are two x's in row 2 phi 4 phi 6 can be or there are two x's in row 3 and likewise in column 1 column 2 column 3 diagonal 1 diagonal 2 so all of these i can basically define uh, features and then i'll set it to 1 if that feature evaluates to true i'll set it to 0 if that feature evaluates to false right so i kind of you introduce a terminology here so these each of these phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 we will now call as a feature of the state or the state action pair and that we are uh, going to use uh, for representing the uh, state action for a function approximator right so these are all the features that we will be using so in the original example of the grid world the features were xs the x coordinate the y coordinate and the action right or it could be some kind of an action encoding like we saw right it could either be like this 100 zero zero, or it could be some number 0 1 3 so all of that will be the actual feature right so i could have either used six features with the four features for action encoding and two for the x and y coordinate or then like we did the other examples we can use three features one for the action and two for the states right and likewise when i start looking at some robot problem i could uh, just even say things like uh, is the block on table can be a feature right or is 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 am i hitting an obstacle can be a feature and so on and so forth apart from the x and y locations uh, of the robot or or some kind of a sonar reading how strong is the sonar reading or how strong is the uh, 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 some laser signal coming in and all of those things can be uh, potentially uh, uh, looked at as well okay